urgent national importance and is on the rising number of casualties among the Nigerian armed forces, uh, Nigerian army and other security agencies recently. The Senate notes with concern the various reports of casualties among the Nigerian army and other security agencies. The Senate further notes that just recently, 24 soldiers were ambushed and killed along Dambua Meduguri Road in Borno State. 19 were wounded and nine were declared missing in action. The Senate is disturbed that in Katina again, about 20 soldiers were also ambushed and killed while several others were wounded. The number of civilian casualty is not known. The Senate appreciates the sacrifice of our armed forces in the fight against insurgency, banditry, and protection of territorial integrity of Nigeria and several other security assignments given to them. The Senate is concerned that if the trend continues, it will have serious implication on the fight against insurgency, banditry, and other forms of criminality in the country. The Senate notes that recently it has been alleged that over 236 soldiers voluntarily resigned their engagement or appointment with the Nigerian Army. Accordingly, resolves one to observe a minute silence in honor of the fallen hero heroes, and two, urge the federal government to urgently intensify the provision of modern equipment to enhance the operational capabilities of our armed forces, and three, mandate the joint committees of Army, Air Force, Navy, National Security, and Nigerian Police to receive briefings on the state of affairs of the services in this regard. Mr. President, before I conclude, the security situation followed by humanitarian crisis in these areas is of great concern. And therefore, the Senate should not relent in standing up as it does to make sure that these issues are adequately and urgently addressed. I so move, Mr. President and distinguished colleagues. Thank you. Is the resignation of over 200 soldiers. This shows the level of disaffection and disenchantment in the front lines. And to that extent, calls for an urgent scrutiny by the Senate of not only the strategic, the tactical and operational uh, uh, details of operations by the, by the armed forces, and also the fact that the, result, the, the, the prayers of the motion I want to call for an amendment to include the Committee on Defense among the committees that uh, are going to look into this matter. I therefore support this very important motion and the prayers and to call for the amendment so that we include the Committee on Defense. Senator Smart, social distancing, please. That has been raised up in this distinguished chamber. It's so central to the survival of our people that this distinguished Senate will not shy away from bringing it on the front banner every time. This Senate will not keep quiet of the importance of this issue. And whenever challenges of the nature that have occurred, as narrated by Senator Alin Dume, we should come out very clearly to show our disgust and at the same time commend 
those operatives of our security forces who lay their lives so that we can survive and be free. Mr. President, we are quite aware and we all know that this Senate has done on so many occasions brought this issue of security of lives and property in this country on the floor of this Senate at various interactions that we have arranged with security forces and security institutions and uh, at every point when any amount of engagement is done between the leadership of the National Assembly and particularly the leadership of this Senate with the President of the Federal Republic. We have gone ahead over the years to establish so many committees whose reports we have endorsed in this chamber and submitted to the executive for action. I am quite aware over the years, a lot of these reports have been there and they have been lying sometimes unimplemented. And this has been the bane of a lot of the work that has been done in the security sector. I do support the position that our committees on defense and security related committees should, as a matter of agency, meet to look in the latest effort that we have done. After we did the presentation and uh, established all the resolutions that we have made in this chamber, I went ahead and distributed copies of the report of uh, the joint committee of all the security related committees, of which I was honored as chairman. And I submitted copies of the report, apart from the normal channel that we submit our resolution through the SGF, I submitted copies of this report to the National Security Advisor, to the Minister of the Interior, the Minister of Defense. The, I even submitted a copy to the Chief of Staff, to the President, you know, so that they are aware of some of the work that we have done. I do believe, Mr. President, that we should not relent. We should continue. The issue that now faces us is that the readiness of our armed forces to really confront these challenges is now under a lot of pressure. And this pressure is reflected in the amount and the number of people that we have been losing due to ambushes by terrorists and bandits. This particular issue needs to be tackled. It means that our security forces will have to change their attack. They have to reorganize their deployment. They have to employ new tactics in this fight. But I think the meeting that is being called of our committees in security and defense sector, we should meet again and review the situation that has arisen as a result of this motion and see what further action we need to take. But I think going forward, we should not relent. We should continue and continue to lend our voice to the threats of security in this country and really work assiduously with the executive of our government to ensure that we bring soccer to our people and make sure that the lives of our people are secure. Thank you very much. In the sense that anything that concerns security or members of the armed forces, paramilitary, or even the persons, I mean the villagers who have been killed, I think it's very important. And we cannot uh, sit down and watch how things are going without talking. If you look at the situation here, it will appear as if maybe, is it that maybe the other people who are killing our uh, army are having more sophisticated equipment than what we have? That's question number one. Question number two, what is creating this kind of problem? Sometimes what I had was this, because I had a discussion with one of the military members. They said that while they are fighting sometimes, you know, their, uh, their rifles or the double barrel or whatever it is, AK-47, uh, will get hooked. And then they will have to wait and then start, you know, repairing it before they, they go back again and, and start fighting. So it shows that some of these equipments are old enough and they have to be replaced. And also in the situation whereby the sophistication in terms of those equipments as compared to the bandits, I think it's another thing that we have to look at. 
Our own should be more sophisticated than the bandits and all the insurgents. Otherwise, there is no way they can be able to face them. And then also, we would also have to look at the issue of the villages that are being displaced. Like I told you, I think last week, when the bombardment was done, these people decided to retaliate. Of course, the military did very well by dislodging these people. But unfortunately, what happened was that by the time the military finished the bombardment, there was no soldiers, I think. An arrangement should have been done in such a way that there was total coordination so that as they were moving, you know, with the bombardment, then the military also on the ground is coming in. And if they are doing that, then of course they would be able to protect the villages and then protect the, the villages themselves. But what is happening is that these people just decided to go back and take over all the town, the towns. I think about 13 towns were dislodged, and most of these people went back to uh, Isa, uh, which is the local government headquarters. And after staying there, some of them are in the, uh, either in secondary school or in primary schools. So I think there must be a coordinated program whereby some of these things can be averted. So that if you are bombarding, the military should be behind, and then of course the police should come to stay and then uh, restore law and order within the place. And I think if we can do that, that will be very good. So I support this motion uh, wholeheartedly, and I believe that this is a very good motion that everybody should support. To the members of the armed forces of Nigeria and the families of those soldiers who were killed in the recent attacks, and to the families of the civilians who also lost their lives. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, there's no better time to discuss this matter than the time when you are sitting as the president of this Senate. Mr. President, we recall that in the eighth Senate, we organized a workshop in which we dwelt on the issue of insecurity in Nigeria for many days. And we reported back, we took a number of resolutions and submitted to the government. At the beginning of insurgency in Zamfara State, we also sent a committee led by your good self to Zamfara. And we came back and gave a very scary report. We also had a number of resolutions which we sent to the executive. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, every soldier in Nigeria represents a part of us because it's indeed a national asset. And the loss of every soldier in Nigeria is a loss of a major asset because we spend a lot of money training them. So it is with the inhabitants of Nigeria We've lost over 300,000 people since the beginning of this insurgency. And before you to understand the enormity of this problem, you have to recall, and of course know, that some sovereign nations, especially the Caribbean, is about the same number, about 300,000 people. So that means we've lost about a nation of nations since this started. I therefore want to appeal that as a nation, there's nothing that should be more important to us today than the security of lives and properties of Nigerians, because that is essentially the primary purpose of government. Our soldiers have been doing their best, but in the words of Mr. President, those best are, seems not to be enough, and we need to do more. So whatever this parliament needs to do to encourage the armed forces of Nigeria and the government of Nigeria to contain this insurgency, we need to do that as a national emergency. If it means putting more personnel or more funds to ensure that we defeat the insurgency, we exactly need to do that. So, Mr. President, I support this motion and I plead that we do not take things for granted any longer in Nigeria. Because it got to the point, I'm sure you are aware, that last week they say some soldiers deserted the army. When it gets to the point where soldiers who are trained to fight and possibly die decide to leave their command, then we have a problem. And I think this is time for us to be more decisive in dealing with this, this situation. I therefore support this motion, and I pray that we take all the prayers. We have a minute silence in honor of the falling heroes. Those in favor of prayer one say aye. Those against say neither aye. Sir. Prayer two, urge the federal government to urgently intensify the provision of modern equipment to enhance the operational capabilities of our armed forces. Those in favor of prayer two say aye. Those against say neither aye. Sir.
Prior three, mandate the Joint Committees of Army, Air Force, Navy, National Security, and Nigeria Police to receive briefing on the state of affairs of the services in this regard. Somebody wanted to amend. Uh -huh, you said, can we also add Ministry of Interior? Because the, I think Ministry of Interior is also relevant here. Okay, somebody should move uh, for this. Those in favor of prayer three as amended by Senator Adi Giang and Senator Stephen Ekpeyon say aye. Those against any, the ayes have it. Thank you very much. Okay, Senator Francis. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, my name is Betty Apiafi. I represent Rivers West Senatorial District. Mr. President, I rise to second the motion as heavily moved that the service chiefs step aside for new people to come in. I so second. General prayer by Senator Francis. Father on CCI. Those against any. That is Thank you very much, distinguished colleagues. I think uh, the spirit of this motion, excuse me, the spirit of this motion is that our armed forces are trying very hard. Just like the president said, the good is still not enough, but we need to continue to encourage them. We need to continue to provide for them. We need to continue to provide for them. They lay their lives on behalf of all of us. And of course, it's very sad that some of them are deserting, are alleged to have deserted the front. We need to get to the bottom of this. This, our joint committee, should be able to find out the, uh, the facts about this allegation of over 200 deserting uh, the war front. And of course, uh, those that are dead will observe a minute's silence, but let me also convey our condolences uh, to our armed forces and the families of those that have lost their loved ones. Uh, let's uh, go for a minute's silence. <laughs> 